Hello there! Today we are going to build a new video editing computer. My old computer that I have always been using for video editing is still working perfectly fine and we will be using plenty of parts out of that system. However, I now want to slowly but surely upgrade all my productions to 4K resolution and for that the old computer as it stands right now is just not good enough. So, let's start off by taking a look at some of the components that I bought for this computer build. First of all, we have the Corsair 200R Carbide Series computer case. I finally decided to get a new case. This is, I would say, kind of a middle of the range type of thing. The reason why I wanted to have a new case is the old one is over 10 years old now and when it comes to mounting modern hardware in there you're just running into problems. For instance when you want to mount an SSD in there it doesn't have any provisions for that obviously because it's too old so you have to use adapter brackets. Also the thermal management in this new case should be much better. Next up we have the graphics card. This is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970 made by Asus and it is the overclocked edition with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory and the reason why I wanted to have this is the CUDA capabilities. Uh, I just recently found out how much the CUDA system, the use of the graphics processing unit for video rendering, can speed up the whole process. Since I was not exactly sure what to get, I simply decided to go all out on it and I bought the best card that they had in the store, which was this one. We're also going to use a new power supply. The old power supply that I have is only a 420 watt supply and it's one of these really cheap Chinese things and I am quite amazed that it has lasted the uh, four years that I had it. But I think we're slowly but surely approaching the point of that thing going FUT. So here's a new 550 watt supply that we need anyways because the uh, graphics card clearly says that uh, you should be running it with a power supply capable of at least 500 watts. This unit was made by Thermaltake. It's very heavy so I think this is going to be good and it has the cable management so you only need to plug in all the cables that uh, you really need. I'm also going to upgrade the main drive with a Samsung SSD. This is a 250 gigabyte SSD. Up until now I had a 120 gigabyte SSD in my computer and that thing is just not big enough. I constantly run out of space on it. So this is going to be a nice improvement. Also when it comes to the speed because so far I've been using a budget-priced SanDisk SSD. I'm not a fan of Samsung, as many of you may know, but when it comes to SSDs, I did some research and Samsung appears to be the best. So I went with the best. Not with the best that they offer. This is the Evo series. There is also a Pro series, but when it comes to uh, speed and all that, there are not too many differences. The main difference is that the Pro series has a longer guaranteed lifetime. And last but not least, I'm also going to need this thing because the new case only has the big five and a quarter inch slots. And to mount my little three and a half inch card reader, I'm going to need this um, adapter thing. Here we have the case unboxed and taken apart for a closer look. As you can see we have three five and a quarter inch slots on the front, two of which we are going to need. We have two USB 3.0 jacks up on top. I'm not sure if I'll be able to use them because uh, I don't know if my 
USB 3.0 extension cord has a header for this. We have the audio connections up there, headphones and microphone, HD audio connector right there. And then we have up there a small reset button and a bigger power button. On the side we have right here is the front air intake on either side and it does have a little wire mesh in there or plastic mesh so that acts as a bit of a dust filter. We have two big ventilator fans in here one of which I definitely can hook up to the motherboard. I'm not sure if there are two connectors. There should be two connectors but we'll see. We have right here the spot where the power supply is going to mount in the bottom so rather than taking air in from the computer case which has already been preheated by the processor it gets fresh cold air from down below and there is a dust filter in here that you can take out and clean so even if you put this on the floor uh, this is not going to turn into a uh, vacuum cleaner we have right here in front something really nice. We can mount four SSDs in this case. There is this dedicated space to put them so we don't have to waste any of the three and a half inch mounting spots for the mechanical hard drives, four of which can be mounted right there. And I'm sure I'm going to be making use of all those spots eventually. And you can actually take off the other side of the case as well and you have to because from right here you uh, make all the connections going to the mechanical hard drives. We also get some holes for a bit of cable management. And what a contrast. Here we have the old computer case and this will have to come apart now. One thing that I am going to miss is this mechanism to open the case. Totally toolless, no screws, no nothing. Really quite a nice design. And inside of here we have all the components that are going to complete the new video editing computer. I now have this pile of components taken out of the old case. This is the MSI H61ME33 motherboard. It's a rather basic thing and I'm not exactly happy with this, but you all know what it's like. When I go and get a new processor a couple of years further down the road, they will have changed the socket and then I can go and get yet another new motherboard. So for as long as the processor stays, this motherboard is going to stay along with it. The processor is an Intel Core i7-2600, which I am running at a constant 3.8 GHz clock speed. I can do that because I have this big Cooler Master heatsink mounted to it. And so I decided against also upgrading the processor because I looked at the models that were available and the prices that they were asking for them. And essentially, I'd have to spend almost 400 euro to get a processor that is 200 megahertz faster and that's just not going to happen. I have to get a better value for my money. So this will stay and I think it is good for the time being. The thing that I have to leave in there for now but that is definitely not going to stay is this uh, kit of RAM. These are two 4 GB sticks, so we have a total of 8 GB. I do definitely want to upgrade that to 16 GB, but I couldn't get the kit that I wanted to have because the store was sold out. So that will have to wait. Also, we are going to put the original SSD into the computer. That is going to act as a source drive for the video editing software. We are going to put this one terabyte mechanical hard drive into there. That has all my data on it, so <laughs> that has got to stay. We'll put this DVD burner in. We're going to put in the USB 3.0 extension card, and no, this does in fact not have the header for the case connector, so no front USB, unfortunately. 
We're also going to put in the Firewire extension card in case I ever want to capture some HDV or mini DV footage. We're going to put in this USB 2.0 bracket that gives me an additional two USB jacks on the back of the unit. We'll be putting in this uh, cable right here, this extension uh, bracket that I, well, I never even used it as a serial port, but, well, you can never know. And then, last but not least, I almost forgot about the USB 2.0 card reader. And this does have a USB 2.0 jack on the front, so there will be some USB connectivity on the front of the computer. Making some progress, I now have the motherboard mounted as well as the power supply. Not happy about that at all. It seems like in the store they've uh, sold me something that is definitely not a brand new unit. When I took the package of the power supply apart, uh, the unit was not in the bubble wrap anymore, and one of the threads of the screws was definitely used. The color was scraped off, and the screws that uh, would have come with this were missing. So, that's enough. I ain't going back to that store anymore, I tell you that. Anyway, I figured before I go and wire up the motherboard and power supply, it would be a good idea to put all the drives up into the front and get those wired up as well in one and the same process. It's quite a bit later now and I tell you, I probably should have done this in my workshop because the screwdrivers that I have in my apartment where we are right now absolute junk. Uh, putting this all together turns out to be a bit of a nightmare. Uh, in fact, putting all the cables in place was much nicer than trying to put all the screws in place. But anyway, as you can see, I have the two SSDs inside the mounting. I have a lot of the cables connected. I was a bit uh, worried about the uh, CPU power connector which uh, you can see up there, because uh, I thought it was an 8-pin connector, but it turns out the connector can be taken apart and then you have two 4-pin connectors, so everything's fine. As we look at the front of the unit, you can see we have the uh, CD-ROM in place and the card reader as well. Audio has been hooked up, power and uh, reset switches. Of course, I won't be able to do anything with the USB 3.0 connectors for the time being. And as we take a look at the back, <laughs> you can see this is starting to get a little crowded. I added the mechanical hard drive right there and the two brackets with the connections, with the additional connections in the back. Also added some more wires. Unfortunately, I told you earlier that I was planning to put in some more hard drives and some more SSDs. Well, it turns out that's not going to happen. Not with this motherboard. I totally forgot that I have no more than four SATA connectors on that stupid piece of junk. So, I guess I am a little bit limited when it comes to that, unfortunately. But, on a positive note, I had a connector for the front case fan, so both case fans are hooked up. We are slowly but surely approaching the end of the computer build. I now have the expansion cards installed. As you can see, we have the huge Asus graphics card. And sitting right underneath there, we have the USB 3.0 and the Firewire card. Uh, this is kind of unfortunate, but there isn't much I can do about that. The problem is, the motherboard is too small, so I can't leave a bit of space in between the cards, which I certainly would like to do. But thankfully, the USB 3.0 card does not cover up all too much of the graphics card fan. So, I think it ought to be okay. Over there we have the PCI Express power connector for the graphics card. So, essentially, the only thing that's left to do is, uh, well, you can clearly tell as I turn this thing around. Well, this has gotten quite heavy. As you can see, I definitely still have to do a lot of cable management. Ah, what a difference a few cable ties will make. 
As you can see, I got the back all organized, so that is ready to have the cover to go on it. As we turn the unit around, I didn't do too much uh, cable management on this side because I'm not sure if I want to take this apart again at some other point. I'm definitely going to take this connector out for right now because that's connected to the SSD that still has the old Windows 7 on it. So, now the moment of truth is about to happen. I'm going to bring this over to the desk. We're going to see if this even works. I switched on the power supply on the back. I have a white LED on the graphics card, so that's probably indicating something. Let's now go ahead and uh, see if this works. Let's uh, turn this on and see what happens. Three, two, one. It's turning on. It is quiet. And I'm seeing something on the screen. You should be seeing it too. A little B4. I think that's an error message, but very often that just tends to stay on for a while. Although this time it doesn't seem to be going away. Well, I tried two times and it always seems to get stuck at this B4 error code, so let me go and look that up, see what it means. Oh! B6 it now says. Wow, that, that actually took a long time. We're going to press the delete key to get into the setup menu. There we go. I hope this doesn't stay this slow. I've now gone through all the settings and probably the reason why it took so long to power on is because it changed around the boot device sequence quite a bit and not necessarily in a way that would make sense. Anyway, uh, just to kind of uh, finish this off, uh, we have, as I already said, the Intel Core i7-2600 CPU running at, well, a stock speed of 3.4 GHz. I have it overclocked to 3.8, which is the maximum, since this is not the overclockable K version. We have 8 GB of RAM, as I already said, that is going to get upgraded to the 16 GB once they have it in the store again. Uh, that store, by the way, is different from that uh, crap shack that I bought the power supply at. And then up here we have the 250GB Samsung SSD and the 1TB mechanical drive, which I am probably going to swap with a 3TB drive eventually. But that'll come at a later point. I'm now going to save and exit. Save, changes and reboot. Yes. And I'm now going to go ahead and install Windows 10. The motherboard kept giving me the B4 error code, so I looked it up and it turns out to be a bug, a known bug, that I actually have experienced in the past and which is partly the reason why I'm still using an ancient PS2 keyboard. As it turned out, all I had to do was to plug the mouse into a different USB port. It is a problem with the USB Anyway, that has been fixed. So now we have reached a point in the Windows 10 installation which is very, very important because if you make the big mistake and just simply click on uh, use the express settings, Microsoft is going to be able to spy on you. What you want to do is you want to go to uh, customize settings and then you can go through and turn all of this off to uh, keep Microsoft out of your business. It's a couple of days later now. The computer has been working great so far. I have everything set up pretty much. I still need to do some things such as installing the printer but as you can see I have my Adobe Premiere back and there is the video that you're seeing right now. So, thank you for watching and see you again soon.